on this channel for the past couple of days, and I even told you this morning, do not short today because we looked like we were setting up plenty of divergences to get a bounce. We're going to go over those charts, but first, we want to go over the quote from Warren Buffett, the very simple one. All of you guys know it. Be greedy when everyone else is fearful, correct? So right now we're looking at the fear greed index and we're in that fear, which means that we should be a little greedy in these areas. If you were subscribed for our Tuesday video, give yourself a nice pat on the back, a thumbs up, and maybe even like this video because right around here, we were talking about this structure here. It is our last line of defense as far as trends go for us to then come down to our 200. And we said, this looks like on the hourly, we have the perfect setup to get some kind of bounce. This morning, I made sure to still put out a video. My internet was out, but I made sure to put out that video telling you do not short at these levels. I put it in the thumbnail for a reason. We have divergences setting up on the MACD. We have divergences setting up on the RSI. These things can launch us to the upside with all this dramatic selling, and everyone is so fearful that we actually need to start to be a little greedy. Now for the bulls, we have to hope in order for this bounce to keep on going to higher levels, are we going to get any kind of bad news that rips us to the downside one more time? Or is this bounce going to continue up into these levels, maybe get some kind of pullback and start to fill some gaps? And I want to give you guys a quick little thumbs up on the VIX. Good job if you did listen to this info because we did notice that there are some divergences and we noticed the RSI getting tight with these divergences and all I was waiting for is a cross of that center line. And this morning, I even came out and said, if we start to break below these moving averages, our next target is going to be the 50. If we break below that, we are most likely going to head for a full retest. So I do expect this bounce to go a little bit higher, but you know, we can get some bad news tomorrow and this starts to rip back up to the upside. But as we go into a daily chart, we are seeing the VIX. Let me get rid of all these drawings. Okay, we are seeing the VIX do exactly what I said we needed to happen in order for us to get that bounce. We are getting that closing bar below the 200. We are still elevated and we're within our Bollinger Band. So this could go back to the upside with some bad news. But as of right now, we are below the 200. And now you can look forward to if we do get below this 50 again, we can see a bigger bounce in the market. For now, we want to be looking for a retest of our broken uh, wedge that we had going on that we just broke out of to give us this sell off. And as we switch over to the cues, we can give ourselves another thumbs up because we kind of called that across the board that we get a bounce from these levels. And I even said in one of my videos, you could draw this line up and I went over that with you, but on the cues, we had a even bigger divergence. Okay. We had a big divergence on both the MACD and RSI, very relevant. And you can see this one cleanly broke out to the upside and we're doing something very important right now. We're holding above all our moving averages as we test the 50. And if we're able to get above the 50 on the hourly, you can pretty much say we are going to head to fill this gap. The reason I showed you the VIX was because of my thinking with this is if we go for that retest, we're most likely going to go up and fill this gap. And then we have to see what happens from there. If volatility comes back in, maybe this is all the pullback we needed to start to break out of our structure. But maybe, just maybe, if that VIX is able to get below 50 again and we see that start to subside, we can come all the way up into the top of our triangle that has formed here. So we can go all the way up to like 375 before we see more selling. Okay, and on Apple, you can give yourself a thumbs up as well, a little pat on the back because we noticed that we had this range going on way back and we said once this range breaks and we get a closing bar on the daily outside of it, we are probably going to head to that 200. The only hurdle that we have is we have to get out of this support zone that I have drawn here, this purple zone. And you'll notice yesterday, uh, we actually talked about in the video how we just came up and barely, barely made it back into that zone in the last three hours of yesterday. And then we actually dropped out of it today and now we are ending back in that zone. So we do have the potential to go higher because we are back within this zone. But if we start to break out and get a daily close out of this zone, we most likely will head to that 200 day moving average. We did stay in this range for quite some time. So if we are able to blow past it, or at least maybe get out of this, use the top like we like to do a lot of the time, we could see a nice ABC, look how that lines up. These are about even, so we could see an ABC pattern all the way up to our gap fill. And if we start to squeeze, and that's just if we start to squeeze, be very careful when I say this, we actually could project even higher all the way up into our resistance zone in gray here of this previous gap. And maybe market makers do want to fill that gap before we start to see more downside in Apple.
Tesla, I'm not going to give us a thumbs up because we are a little, little worried about this one. But if we do look, we did create that small divergence here yesterday. And um, uh, the reason I just wasn't fully convinced on it is because the R side doesn't have a very significant one, but the MACD does. So we can still use this as a point of reference to say, hey, this is starting to slow. Maybe this is our left shoulder. Maybe this is our head. And then maybe, just maybe, we are starting to carve out a small right shoulder that then we can measure here to here. And that most likely will project us up into our gap resistance. And at that point, I'm leaning towards that gap fill. Um, the most bullish we can get off of this bounce is most likely up into our resistance from our big triangle that goes all the way back to 2021 up here at 279. I don't really think that this will um, get any higher than that unless, unless around this area we start to see some structure, we bounce up, we see some more structure, and then we break out of that level. Now, I know you guys like NVIDIA, so we're going to go over that one too. And we just noticed, and I kept my drawing here, of we're starting to get some kind of flagging. So we could have seen some kind of move like this previous one up here to the downside. But we actually didn't get that. We saw a little retest or fake out out of this structure to the downside. And then once we got that retest, we started to move upward pretty quick. And right now we're doing something that's very important. We're holding above those moving averages and we're above the 50. So we can possibly even start to target 452.50 right around that hourly 200 right here, okay? Overall on NVIDIA, I am still looking for a possible um, head and shoulders start to form, okay? I'm looking for this left shoulder head and I'm looking for this right shoulder to fully form. I would like to come up it, it to come up into gap resistance or even get this gap fill and then we see some kind of downward pattern, right? Um, overall, I just wanna be paying attention to price and what happens as things develop. We could see some kind of bad news. At, I mean, even tomorrow and volatility is still outside of that wedge and above the 50, we could see this tear down tomorrow. But overall, right now, we are seeing those bounces start to play out to the upside, which means we could project as high as like 471. We do want to be open to all scenarios, so I don't want to just say like, hey, we're going to go to this gap fill and crash. No, if something changes and we do start to see this daily fully roll over and give us that buy signal and we have no real 30 minute hourly divergences at this level, maybe we do start to see some uh, some some little wet or some consolidation in this area. And then if we do get that consolidation, we could see that head up and get another touch of our recent trend at the highs here. Oh, lastly, on NVIDIA, something really cool that I learned from another YouTuber that I literally just found. Okay, Bull or Bollinger Bands, these are, these are kind of interesting. I've never used it like this, but when a Bollinger Band starts to trend down, it is a slight hint that the uh, stock itself is actually going to try to take back its 20-day moving average. I just thought that was cool, and if you want to write that down somewhere, that's pretty neat if you do use Bollinger Bands. And what that means is since we're seeing that Bollinger Band come down, we can kind of um, say that we are at least going to get some kind of test of our 20 day moving average. And if we close above it, that could signal us some strength. We do have the 50 on the daily right above that. So we would want to pay attention to if we're able to close above it, are we going to project up into that gap fill? That's overall what I think will happen. I really think we're going to use this bounce to start to fill some gaps. Amazon, just like almost everything else we've shown you, it did, it did have that divergence. You saw these divergences everywhere, and all we needed was a little bit of good news to project us higher. Um, we're doing something kind of neat on Amazon, which is right at the um, breakout of this wedge that is fo that has formed for a, a while now, and that's a full measured move. We'll get into that, but we are starting to see a flagging out here, which is actually pretty good news because a lot of the great moves in stocks actually don't retest. So the fact that we're getting some kind of flag could signal to us that we're going to see another move maybe above the 50. And if we start to flag out again, um, I would say we're going up into gap resistance pretty quickly. What I want to see happen after we get to gap resistance, I would really like for this to actually pull back and give us this because we have our left shoulder, our head, and maybe that right shoulder forms, and then we can take some kind of entry and play this to the upside. You just wanna measure from the base to the top to get your point. Um, the full measured move of all this, after I clear off all this stuff, okay, the full measured move for this breakout is actually way up here towards that 141.10. Um, 
I don't like to play full measured moves. I like to look at the measured move and see how much momentum we have behind it and where I think it could get. So I'm going to look and target this gap fill right here, but I also want to be really paying attention what happens to price or what the structure looks like on a 30 minute or even hourly at this gap fill and at this retest. Okay, so that's where I'm going to be paying attention to Amazon in the near future. We are going to give you guys a thumbs up and a pat on the back for TLT and the 10-year yield. We're looking at that right now, the 10-year yield. And all we said here was we are starting to go ballistic and we need this thing to come off. And this is a great bar to signal that we are going to see this start to pull back to some moving averages and maybe get a retest of this high that we broke out of. I don't want us getting too bullish on anything, okay? This bounce does not have to make a huge move because we are still up here in the unknown. This thing could start to flip around with one word from Jerome Powell, and then we would see even more dramatic selling to the downside. So let's not try to get too bullish or bearish here. Let's just play price as it starts to show in front of us. TLT was pretty cool. If you watch my morning video, we were out of the Bollinger Bands and I kind of hinted that I wanted to see it come down into my price target. And I was like, oh, we're actually hitting my price target in the um, uh, pre-market. So that was pretty cool. So all I did this morning for you was drew out this nice little line here, which just is a little trend that I noticed. And look at that, we come right down to that line and we start to buy up from that level. And from here, we can start to expect some things, okay? If this is able to turn over on the daily. This right here, this divergence right here. We don't necessarily have one. We have a, sm a small one going way back to this low. But overall, if this MACD, if this daily is able to turn up and we see this start to cross, we can actually see TLT come up into here, maybe pull back for some kind of right shoulder. And then we can see this start to pull across here, get that left head and right shoulder. That's just what I'm paying attention to because it would look very good. Doesn't mean it has to play out that way, but overall, give yourself a thumbs up if you were subscribed and you played it like this and you weren't shorting today. That's the big thing. The big move already happened. We need a bounce in order to short if you are bearish at that time. You don't wanna be shorting at uh, low levels when the big move has already happened. The main takeaway from this video is we are starting to see the early signs of this bounce come to fruition. It doesn't mean it can't get torn down tomorrow though, okay? I want you to be very careful with bounces like this. If we start to see a full bullish reversal, I will start to put those types of things in my videos. But if I start to see weakness within this bounce, I'm gonna start to put that in my videos. Thank you so much. You guys are commenting, you're subscribing, you're liking. I really, really appreciate it. It goes a long way And as I just started this channel. So I really, really do appreciate it. I hope you guys have all the luck in the world uh, trading tomorrow. And I hope you guys have a great weekend, okay? Peace.